Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. A lot of things happening in the news and beyond. I have a lot of things I want to talk about. The city council has talk, talked about buying the Sleep In Motel. I got Dubbin stuff. I got pre-critic. I got a, a live interview, well, actually a pre-taped interview with Washington Children's Shelter about how they're going to do Bike for Shelter while still uh, keeping up with the social distancing put in place by the state of Montana. But the biggest thing that's happening in the state of Montana is that Governor Steve Bullock spoke the other day uh, talking that they're going to be lifting certain restrictions on businesses and downtown uh, stores and restaurants, bars, and stuff like that. Um, so let's kick things off with uh, talking a little bit more about how these phase openings are taking place. Uh, Governor Steve Bullock spoke earlier Wednesday um, in a live uh, conference to say that Montana has been doing really well about curbing the, uh, the uh, spread of COVID-19 otherwise known as the coronavirus. And as a result, he decided to uh, start allowing places to reopen again. And the very first thing that's gonna be opening in the state of Montana starting this Sunday is uh, people to be able to gather for religious assembly. You can go to church again on Sundays. Um, many uh, other businesses will start opening, I believe will be on April 27th. So April 27th, uh, which is originally going to be the expiration date for uh, the restrictions and everything. And also uh, April 26th is the individual stay-at-home order that this uh, Governor Steve Bulk also mentioned. But he also stressed that people should uh, take into account that uh, we want to prevent anything happening forward. Uh, many questions were asked. He's like, what's happening next in the next phase? And Steve Bulk was like, this is a very wait and see. And this is kind of us kind of testing the waters to see whether or not we can move forward with reopening the economy in the state of Montana. And uh, part of these restrictions are still applying to concerts and other things like that. So a lot of big social gathering events and whatnot. So a lot of times they're stressing that restaurants and bars still have a capacity restriction on there. You guys can check it out. I believe Q2 uh, out of Billings, Montana. Uh, they did a, a live stream and they talked a little bit more about it as well. You can look that up on their website, Q2 Billings, Montana. Um, that's just kind of a couple things happening as well, but in the city of Missoula, one of the things that are also happening here is that MCPS is deciding whether or not to reopen their school. And one of the big things is that they're going to be hold holding a special board meeting on May 5th. Um, it's happening um, sometime. Um, also, uh, Governor Steve Bulk said that the schools will have to decide whether or not they would open, and this would be statewide on May 7th which is a Thursday, and MCPS Rob Watch and superintendent said that he's, uh, let's see, what does he say? Our contingency plans will rely heavily on the guidance of our Missoula City County Health Department and restrictions regarding crowd size or social distancing. But here's the rub. One of the big things that Rob Watson is also talking about is that they want to see about uh, one of the biggest gathering events, which is graduation. Uh, you bring families together, you know, your kids graduating, and uh, Rob Watson, uh, superintendent with MCPS um, schools, is saying that we're going to play it by ear. We're going to see how it goes in the future, but they're going to start discussing that on their official board meeting, which is happening on May 12th regarding graduation. So Superintendent Roberts said in an interview with N NBC Montana is that uh, we're they're going to start restri restricting crowd sizes and social distancing. They're going to try to see how they're going to move forward with this. Well, if some of these restrictions are being raised in Montana, many other communities are seeing similar things begin to happen as well. Nationally, uh, California, some smaller towns in California are starting to uh, open up parks and have beaches um, while still reminding folks to uh, wear masks. Um, CDC is basically saying, like, you should just wear masks, don't shake hands, keep a six feet distance away from everybody at all times, and just practice social distancing. Um, but right now, uh, staying at home is no longer required. Of course, you know, there's still people who have to go out for essential services, grocery stores and stuff like that. But as we're moving forward, more businesses, retail stores, and other things like that will start opening as well. Other places that have been hit the hardest, such as New York, um, will see continued restrictions um, with... Uh, be 
with it as well. Montana has been fairly fortunate because there is a high level of elbow room in the state of Montana. And I looked it up just recently and there were uh, 437 confirmed cases in the state of Montana. 273 have recovered from the coronavirus and there have been 12 deaths in the state of Montana. And this is related to Thursday's statistics as well. Of course, in related news, many organizations in Missouri are looking to continue serving the community uh, of Missoula, and I will have Megan and Angie from Washington Children's Shelter. Um, usually in the month of May, they do Bike for Shelter, but with social distancing, they're asking people for the month of May uh, that they're going to be doing a biking um, um, kind of a celebration. You could do donate money. They want you to take pictures with their uh, uh, their shirts on for Bike for Shelter, and it's going to be an interesting, uh, but it's going to be a wonderful event that helps raise money for the Washington's Children's Shelter. And I'm going to have them on here right after a couple of teas of new programs going to be airing on MCAT right after this. When Plum Creek Timber Company put up 89,000 acres of land for sale in the heart of the Blackfoot. With the help of Nature Conservancy, who stepped in as the interim buyer of the 89,000 acres, the Blackfoot Challenge then facilitated a decades-long process of putting those purchased TNC acres into public ownership or private ownership with conservation easements, resulting in lasting protection and the ability to then conduct restoration projects on those same acres. Hi, I'm DeShane, by the way. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm not okay with this. <laughs> I was raised, I'm, you know, I'm Mandan and Urukra, um, but, you know, raised mostly around uh, Mandan ways, and it's not, I'm not comfortable going into a mixed sweat, I'm not comfortable going into a sweat, this is no disrespect to you, but with someone I don't know, and he said, absolutely, he said, you do not have to do anything that is not your way, that makes you uncomfortable, he's like, because that's, that's not what this is about. Ceremonies are about healing. They're about bringing good medicine. If this is not your way, if this is not healthy and good for you, then you do not need to come in there. And then I went back and told Ethan that I didn't have to go, and he was kind of mad. But, um, so... For the purposes of this talk, Native American, Native American refers to American Indians in the lower 48 states, Alaska Natives, and Native Hawaiians. Though I have to say, when I look at lots of different sources, um, statistically, Native Hawaiians aren't included in always with uh, um, American Indians and Alaska Natives. So just a disclaimer. I am using the United Nations flexible definition of indigenous, which is fundamentally geopolitical. Inasmuch as particular ideas require a cultural definition of indigenous, I will offer that as I go along. Okay. I think one of the things that impresses me is um, there are so many people who uh, think Montana is Glacier National Park, or they think Montana is Old Faithful. Um, Montana is very many things. We are a big state, and dividing us down the middle about where he was raised, we've got western Montana and eastern Montana. And in his paintings, um, there's a distinction of place. Um, it's not all western Montana. He's got uh, the giant uh, uh, pi picture, photo, not photo, uh, painting of the sagebrush where, I mean, I could move closer and I could identify the plants. And uh, the recognition that Eastern Montana is its own kind of beauty. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Sure. So my name is Megan, and I am the development coordinator at Watson Children's Shelter. And my name is Angie Doucette, and I'm the development director. And uh, part of uh, moving forward uh, with your guys' big fundraising event, um, Bike for Shelter, um, you guys can't do that, but you're doing something a little different this time around. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? We are. We're going virtual. Um, everyone needs to practice their 
I like to say physical distancing, not social distancing. Um, so we're physically distancing ourselves from our event. This year was our 20th annual in 2020, and we were looking so forward to doing something huge um, to have those numbers be part of, of the event. But um, it is huge. It's different. We have to change it. So we are still doing our event. We're super lucky to have amazing sponsors to sponsor the event. And um, we're all just gonna go on a bike ride with our families or by ourselves. And we're just asking people to register for the event so that we can um, still participate together separately. Nice. Oh, can you guys tell me a little bit more about, uh, cause I know that every year, uh, the Montana railing is one of your biggest sponsors. Yes. Yeah. So, um, sorry. Um, Montana rail link and the Dennis and Phyllis Washington foundation, uh, have now this year split the major sponsor spot. So we're super happy to have both of them on as our, uh, premier sponsors. Nice. And, uh, Part of this is uh, this is a big chunk of your uh, annual fundraising is with the Bike for Shelter. Of course, you do many different uh, um, events as well. I believe you guys do like a bowling night as well. We actually don't do a bowling night, but our other event is the Tennis Pro-Am oh, yeah, in right. October. Um, this year, it's October 1st through the 4th. And so um, we're hoping to be able to keep everything the same for that this year, but we'll just see what happens. <laughs> Right. We're kind of playing it week by week at this point. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so tell us about uh, a little bit more about your expectations from this uh, virtual uh, kind of uh, do it yourself at home kind of uh, bike for shelter. Yeah, I think that we're just expecting everyone to kind of um, share on social media and show, you know, that they're still supporting the children and the staff that we have working every day and um you know, that they um, are still a part of this and still a part of the community, even if they are not in Missoula. Anyone can participate in the ride. So um, from anywhere in the world, anywhere they want at any time during the whole month of May. And so we just really want to emphasize, you know, physical dis distancing, but also still getting out, enjoying the nice weather and um, supporting Watsons during this time. Nice. Uh, do you have anything to add, Angie? Uh, really, we're just looking to keep that part of the event as just keeping the word out what Watson does. So we take care of 24 children at any given time. Um, usually our average right now is a little over 100 children a year we take care of um, when they are experiencing some sort of crisis. So for us, this is just really keeping the awareness of what we're doing in our community. These children are usually um, part of that, part of our community where no one really talks a lot about. So for us, just keeping the awareness out that we're here, we're still taking care of these kids. Our houses are full. Uh, we also service uh, 30 families right now in our program called Healthy Foundations. And that is um, helping those high-risk families uh, while they're pregnant or almost, um, you know, having these moments of time with an infant that can really create an unhealthy family unit. I right. guess. And, um, and this is really one of those times where those families need that support. So we're not closing the doors. We need to help those families and make sure that those children are safe. And we just follow those families along this whole path and just give them that, uh, that support that they need. So for us, this event is super important, not only because it helps us raise money, which of course is what all nonprofits need, um, especially right now, Right. but really we're just trying to create that awareness that we're still going, we're still helping children and families and, this is a crisis that is um, just proven that it will, um, it'll just keep happening. And we need to be that bright light in those children's and families' lives right now. Cool. And I guess my next question is how can people uh, help and spread the word and plug it? Like, like if they take a photo of themselves on their bikes with their families, what do they hashtag all that stuff? 
Yeah, so we actually, the event is free this year. It's free every year. Um, we started that last year, and we just feel like it's really important for everyone to be able to par participate without the registration fee. Um, and so you'll get a free t-shirt and a bike for shelter um, rodeo medal in there in the mail if you register on our website. So if you go to watsonschildrenshelter.org and register. And then also if you share on our social media um, a picture or a selfie of you on your bike ride and you hashtag bike for shelter, then you will be entered to win a raffle basket with a value of over $250. Um, it has lots of good prizes in there. Um, lovely things from around the Missoula community and um, just a super fun way to get involved in the um, bike for shelter event and see what other people are doing. Nice. And that, this is, sounds like it's going to be a very uh, evolved uh, particular program. And hopefully next year you guys will be able to get back on the bikes um, and get the wheels to tread. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to be clever. <laughs> but um, where can people find more information? How can people get in contact with you guys? Just one last uh, push. Yeah. Do you want to answer, Megan? <laughs> so if you go to our website, watsonschildrenshelter.org, or if you go to our Facebook page, we have um, most of the information for Bike for Shelter on there as well. And you can always email Angie or I um, at info at shelterforchildren.com or call the office and hopefully someone will be there to answer your questions. <laughs> awesome. Anything else, Angie? Yeah, well, our phone number is 406-549-0058. Um, again, we, we usually have one person in the office right now answering phone calls, but the best way to get us is info at shelterforchildren.com. And four is the number four, not F-O-R. Right. And um, really just checking out our website. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. We're constantly posting um, things that you can get involved with. Uh, and then just always going to our website, we are um, limiting our ways donations are coming in our door, but we're not limiting the need for the donations. So we are welcoming anyone to give us a call and we'll schedule an appointment. Um, and then we also on our website, you can just hit the donate now button and you don't have to get out of your house or change out of your pajamas. You can just donate online. <laughs> nice. Well, thanks, Angie. Thanks, Megan. I really appreciate you guys uh, joining me on this uh, uh, video chat. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having us. We appreciate it. guys welcome back um we're talking about some shows and movies and streamings and games and all sorts of things that can distract you guys during this time of everything's basically being shut down one of the things that are coming out as well is in a chris hemsworth movie that has nothing to do with thor and it's called extraction extraction uh hey come this week and chris hemsworth sold uh not a thor movie pass uh, this he's a military guy and a movie's called Extraction, so I'm assuming he's extracting somebody from the uh, war kind of torn area as well. So the whole idea is that it's an Indian boy from an Indian cartel um, type group. It's, it's something like that. The, uh, so 
Um, anyways, Chris is like, you have to come with me if you want to live. I'm, em uh, I'm embellishing, of course. But then the mission takes a turn for the worse, and Chris Henworth whether has to has to decide whether or not he's going to save his own bacon or he's going to rise up to the challenge and save this kid. I'm pretty sure it's the latter. Um, but that's kind of what's happening. Uh, that's what kind of a movie and streaming show movie that's coming out this weekend as well. Um, another thing that is already out is a show, or could I say more of a podcast where they decide to animate around it? It's called The Midnight Gospel. Midnight Gospel is basically kind of like one of those not safe for work kind of uh, videos, but it really dives deep inside the uh, moral ambiguities of life and also just kind of wacky things are happening in the background. It's such a weird, tripped out show. Uh, I might, you might want to pass on this. Uh, it looks like it's cute animation, but they really kind of get deep into the uh, depths of uh, life and everything like that. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really distracting because it, the whole show is uh, breaking the fourth wall. But when they actually interact with the story, you're just like, this really throws me off. So it's kind of like the opposite of a fourth wall breaking movie. Uh, up next, we got Trials of Mana. Um, you like Final Fantasy, but if you think it's too intelligent for you, well, we'll get a dumbed down version called The Trials of Mana. The whole point of this is it's uh, kind of like a JRPG uh, where you uh, it's turn-based, and uh, basically, if you ever play turn-based games, it's basically just a huge time waster. You get into battles, and you basically, it has nothing to do with the fact about how hard the bosses is, because the level of boss hardness has everything to do with how long it takes to defeat the boss. Hence, Trials of Mana. Boom. So those are some of the things that are coming out this weekend as well, that you guys can use that to entertain yourselves as we slowly start to begin to open or uh, businesses and stuff like that so people can get out more and do other things rather than play games and watch uh, cartoon podcasts and a horrible movie that Chris Hemsworth's not be not even being Thor so that's kind of the movies that are coming out I have a movie that I made for you guys as well tubes circles Mm, this is crazy. Excuse me, will you explain why all these tubes and beakers and stuff is all around in here, sir? <gasps> Wait a minute. You're not a sir. Well, for all you normal people, I identify myself as a female. Uh, so what do you got cooking? Um, I'm not, not that, not that assuming that all females cook or whatever, but, you know, you're working with plants and I can see steam coming out from you the plants. You know you could relax. I'm only cooking science stuff. Science stuff? That's my favorite kind of stuff. Well, if you're that interested in my science stuff, perhaps you would be interested in learning about my herbs. Hmm. So would you say that these are self-smoking? <laughs> Smoke? More like self-vaping. Uh, could you please elaborate a little bit more? Alright, fine. You can have fire in space. Oh, so you don't have to light it up yourself. <laughs> Do you mind? While well, vaping is the future after all, you know, like all this vaping that's in the air, it's such a great opportunity to get the most impact from your herbs in the first place. <laughs> oh wow, there's all kind of chemicals science, around in this science, place. Science, 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 science. I like science. Um... Well, could you stop science explaining me? I'm the one with all the beakers and stuff. I think I know a little bit more about mixing and matching all sorts of these herbs than you do, handsome. Oh no, I mean no disrespect to you. You are a scientist after all. I'm just a guy who flies ships and hooks up things and does construction work in space. Your job is extremely important and I respect you, not because you're a woman. Cause I'm hot to trot? <laughs> yeah, sure. Go on. Well, it's just that I don't see many uh, people in this profession who are in space <laughs> and also do science stuff in space. I was in the military. Thank you for your service. Oh no, I'm not using that to pick you up. I'm just saying that I was in the service. I wouldn't mind if you're using that to pick me up. Yes, yes! Well, um, so you like watching movies and stuff? Maybe we could, uh... Well, my job keeps me very busy. When you're developing a self-smoking herb like me... Oh no, you don't have to say it. I can take rejection. I'll just stand back here and idolize your work. Huh, by work I hope you don't mean my... personality. Well, you know, I was thinking about taking a break from all this work. Perhaps you can join me later. <laughs> yes, yes, please. Perhaps a nice game of Uno would be a nice way to unwind. <clears throat> Uno's the worst. Games at 8 p.m. sharp. Uh, you can't relax and play Uno. It's just, uh, it's just not how the game works. back. 
this was an extra long city council meeting. Um, there were a lot of people, and of course this was where they invited um, health officials from the Missoula City County Health Department to talk uh, how important this emergency COVID quarantine shelter is. And this is going to be, this was a purchase that the city made earlier this week for $1.1 million. I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into why and some of the reactions of some of the community members moving forward with this potential property um, short term for quarantine for people who happen to be homeless, but long term happens to be a redevelopment for low income housing as well as the city uses TIF funding to uh, buy the place and uses uh, federal funds to clean up the sites for quarantine use and to help uh, uh, curve the spread of the coronavirus amongst homeless populations that don't have the ability to isolate themselves. So Aaron Leahy from the City County Health Department thinks that this is a good idea to help curve the spread of COVID-19. As you know, with a pandemic and novel disease, when there is no vaccine or other preventive treatment, um, or treatment for after the fact, the only way to control that is by limiting contact between people who may have it and people that are susceptible for having it. So I'm the one bringing this difficult request to you. I recognize that we are all in a difficult position and that this is an unusual request, but it is unusual request and during an unusual time. And what we've been trying to do to quarantine and isolate people who do not have a suitable location to do that has been extremely difficult and not, not reliable. Of course, the health department jumped on this as a solution to isolating and containing COVID-19 among homeless individuals. Aaron Leahy says that this isolation um, is the main way health officials can help curb the infection rate. So far, there were 29 individuals who had no way of isolating themselves at this time. Of course, on the side note, Governor Bullock also slowly opening stores across the state. Quarantine still applies for folks who may have contact with individuals. Um, but let's dive more into what some of the city councilors think uh, we're rushing into this land purchase. And this is Jesse Ramos. Um, what he has to say about this purchase. He said we can't predict any of this. So let's just say that everything goes well. We've redeveloped this. We've, we've made um, some great homes for people to afford, that, that they can afford to live in, and then other pandemic hits. Are we going to buy another hotel? Gosh, Jesse, I have no idea what we're going to do. If another pandemic hits, you'll be mayor and you can sort it. <laughs> hey, I'll take a pass on that. I, I appreciate that. But um, so, so. I guess my question of this is, I mean, it, it certainly makes sense um, to me. It makes more sense to me if we were to hold on to this long term as a quarantine facility. But I, I see us setting ourselves up for another failure if another pandemic hits. I mean, there have been studies that show that pandemics could get um, uh, more prevalent. So I, I'm just asking the question. Um, I think it is appropriate. Maybe in 50 years, somebody will look back and be like, that loudmouth had a pretty good point. But of course, what the city does versus what the city did in the past is up in the air. This is a very what if kind of scenario. Um, of course, only time will tell whether this is, was an actual good idea in the first place. Of course, moving on to more of the public side, many folks voice opposition in the themes of the state is opening up again. No point in buying a facility since the pandemic has peaked. Peaked. That is a word that's been used, uh, been thrown around a lot, especially in uh, media and uh, ways for us to start reopening the uh, state of Montana. And many people are uh, worried that uh, uh, on one side, we already peaked, uh, we should reopen and we should get things back to normal. Uh, on the other side, many uh, people who think that there's just gonna be a second wave happening as well. So there's just a lot of uh, contradiction. There's a lot of uh, back and forth with that as well. Uh, Elizabeth Weber thinks that there are better ways to rent out rooms than these circumstances. And she's with one of the first wave of public comments I'm going to show you. I don't know why you guys don't choose some other hotels that are available, rent out the Marriott or one of the other big motels in Missoula that is already capable of taking on these people that have the coronavirus that need to be treated this place uh, is not suitable for anybody that's sick. It's not suitable for anybody that's healthy. 
of course, part of what the city is doing is making this emergency COVID-19 housing until they decide to put money into more affordable housing, which is the next comment likes the purchase. Uh, Peter uh, Walker Tellhart is all in for this, for potential affordable housing. I feel like it's a proactive move in order to uh, address a potential crisis in our community. Uh, I appreciate the proactive leadership of our city in doing so. I know one of the objections is that potentially the city is overpaying. I do not think that's a concern. I, I drove by that site earlier this evening and uh, am, am convinced as a city taxpayer that it will be an excellent return on investment for our community and address a critical housing shortage. And here's a representative, uh, Brad Cheetah, thinks that this goes beyond the city's overreaching goals. Uh, that somehow seems like uh, we are overstepping our bounds as a, uh, an entity, as a municipality, to become the surrogate parent for people who are in a position where they may have a home, but for whatever reason, the city or county determines that it's not feasible for them to be isolated or quarantined. And as far as the individuals who are homeless, we have a homeless population of, I think it was quoted, 377 individuals. Many of those are people who have been homeless for a long time and are residents of Missoula, not transients. Many of them are military. And what are we doing to try to resolve that issue? And when are we going to accept the fact that we cannot take care of everyone? We don't have the facilities. We don't have the money. We don't have the time and resources. Of course, so far the public comment against this uh, was a quick reaction to wonder why the city is purchasing a motel at all and for at the potential uh, tail end of a state emergency, state mandatory quarantine. On the other hand, this was going to be used via FEMA, uh, the federally regulated quarantine zones for folks who have no other places to go and have the disease. Um, Nate Thomas reflects on the city of MOVE for purchase. I think using fear um, to push this purchase through is inappropriate and puts the burden on taxpayers for this county for the long term. I think, you know, making a hateful decision to purchase something that you have no, I mean, it was stated on record that you have no desire to continue it after um, the COVID passes. Is of course, uh, Nate Thomas also mentions that regardless that FEMA may foot some of the bill for this site is okay, but is still worried about the long-term financial implications of this purchase. Of course, so far uh, the next hour, the city discussed back and forth addressing concerns in the people in the city of Missoula. Um, Amber, um, Amber Cheryl, city councilor, thinks that this purchase um, helps on many points and not just on COVID-19. Um, so I believe that this is a really strategic use of TIF funding for an undoubtedly growing need in our community. I also think that, that this is a smart and humane thing to do. It increases public safety for everyone, reduces our numbers, and results in a lower cost for the health. Not only is it the right thing to do, but it may um, help keep our economy open in the future, which will be the right thing financially do, to do for our community. I don't think that we can separate the crisis as either health or economy, as some people have noted, as they are inextricably linked together. Of course, throughout this mini uh, meeting, they really dive deep into this a little bit more. I'm just giving you kind of guys a highlight of what's going on in there as well. That was the last quote I was going to show you guys. Many issues uh, health officials have stressed is that you continue to self-isolate social distancing moving forward through openings of stores and schools again, we can prevent any more shutdowns in the long run. Part of this is that people have to take self-responsibility. People are going to be put in situations where they're going to be in social groupings, and one of the things that they want you to try to do is at least keep six feet away from people. Even if you're in the same room with them, you can still socialize, but the whole point of social distancing is that you can still be social while not being physically close to them. That's kind of what they want to hopefully do this and prevent any second waves because as soon as we open the floodgates to this happening, it's just going to end up being another isolation. It's going to only get worse. So the whole idea is that the city tried to put in a motion to reassess the property. Um, they wanted to reassess. Um, some of the city council members listened to some of the comments and were just like, maybe we should kind of hold off for a week. Um, public health officials urged that the city should 
hop on this as soon as possible, and uh, this motion was this motion failed, so the city ended up purchasing it right then and there. Um, well, approving the purchase right then and there. Of course, uh, you can watch the whole meeting and how it happened. Uh, it's a four-hour meeting. I, I I went through the meeting, kind of picked out the main points of kind of what that's going on there as well. But of course, if you want more information, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us, as always, where you can find more information. Um, most of these meetings will continue being on MCAT channel 190. Um, many people have voiced uh, uh, opposition to the city having a quorum um, via Zoom and online as well. But uh, the public comments, uh, they have they put the number up online as well, but you can also uh, watch for the public comment uh, sections on MCAT um, when they air the sh when they air the um, the city council meeting on Monday um, at 7 p.m. on uh, channel 190 Spar uh, Charter Spectrum channel. So, and of course, if you miss the meeting, you can always uh, go to the website. You can find your, your ward representation, find out what ward you're in, and also you can um, contact your ward representative and voice your concerns as well. So that kind of does it for my city council report. Here is your most recent updated uh, COVID uh, informational piece from the city county health department and the county of Missoula. So, and then when I come back, I'm going to start wrapping up my show. And thank you for joining us for our Thursday, April 23rd, 2020 briefing. Uh, with us today, uh, along with Commissioner Josh Slotnick, all the way from over in Missoula County, across the street under most circumstances. Uh, we have Grace Decker from uh, Missoula's United Way um, Zero to Five Strategic Collaboration Coordinator, and Anna Semple, who works at our City County Health Department coordinating our uh, Healthy Start program. As the uh, coronavirus pandemic started to come into Missoula, we realized that child care might become a reason why um, critical health care workers might need to stay home. And so from the beginning, the emergency child care task force was really focused on trying to make sure that that did not happen so that child care wasn't a reason why our community might be at more risk of, um, of tragic consequences to the crisis. So we focused from the beginning on the idea of um, trying to make sure that we had enough child care in operation to serve the needs of folks who work at the hospitals and who work for um, those critical occupations like um, first responders and um, police and fire. And so we did some assessment around that. It's estimated about 80 child care facilities are still open today. Some of them closed when the schools closed because of the concern for bringing children together. And all of the facilities that remain open have adjusted their model in order to encourage best practices as recommended by the CDC, um, by the state, and by our health department. So they are doing different drop-off and pickup routines. They have fewer people in a space, so basically four kids to one adult and, one, and maybe up to 10 people in a room, which is way smaller than the general ratio of what how they operate. And we also wanted to direct people, especially those who had school age kids, to businesses that had set up the emergency child care, so the Boys and Girls Club and the YMCA. Mm -hmm. We really wanted to make sure that we understood what the needs of those child care businesses were, because the last thing we want to do is roll out of the crisis with fewer child care businesses operating than we had when it started. What do you feel like you want to make sure parents know right now around child care issues? This is a pretty intense time to uh, have a small child. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. Yeah. To two parents. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I Me too. They're that, just big. So they're yeah. <laughs> I think it depends. Every parent is in a different boat right now. So a lot of parents are at home with their children, and that's partially why child care facilities have extra openings. Um, and parents that are at home, I think just patience with yourself and self care is the thing that we are emphasizing over and over again. Is this is hard for everyone. You are basically doing likely a full-time job at home and caring for a child full-time at the same time. And that childcare is a profession for a reason. It's a very difficult profession. And um, to add that to your workload every day, just you have to be patient with yourself because it's not going to be easy. And so we are just recommending that people take time for themselves, connect with people distantly um, in whatever way you're able to 
and to really look for those ways to help yourself stay centered and grounded so that you can be there for your child in the way that you want to be. You should know that the um, YMCA and Boys and Girls Club are operating child care um, from, I believe, as early as 630 in the morning until about seven o'clock at night. And that's true for children zero to five, as well as school age children. Um, and that there's financial assistance available for those programs to keep the cost quite low. Um, those are open to people in those essential occupations. And we also have available through those programs and we're getting ready to open more should it still become necessary if we see kind of a, a rolling nature to this crisis. Um, we have childcare that is specifically for those healthcare and medical professionals. Um, so that that population um, has a little bit of extra assurance around that. And that's again through the YMCA and Boys and Girls Club. And the kind of child care that's being provided now for a variety of reasons is more expensive to provide. The group sizes have to be smaller. Um, and we also need to be paying providers a little bit more to recognize that this is, this is a little bit more hazardous work for them. And so if people want to make a donation to support the cost of childcare, they can do that by donating to the YMCA or Boys and Girls Club directly, just contact them, or child care resources. And you can donate directly to that scholarship fund to help parents pay for childcare. And then if people wanna do something that's more direct, of course, we're not encouraging people still at this point to get together socially um, to take care of each other's kids, but people can help take care of parents and so I'd encourage people, if you know someone who is home with young kids, to, um, to reach out to them, ask how they're doing, how it's going. Um, that sometimes someone to listen to you while you say what a hard day it was is the best way that we can support each other as a community of parents and as a community of people who care. That's a, that's a great answer. Thank you. Thanks both to you guys. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you both. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Turns out if we take care of kids, we end up with good humans. So thank you for the work you're doing. Absolutely. The and we're very grateful to you. And thanks for your time today. And keep safe and keep healthy. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Hey guys, welcome back. And this is kind of like the end of my show. I want to thank you guys for joining me. Uh, MCAT, um, as you know, many stores are starting to reopen again starting on after the April 27th. MCAT is going to remain closed as we are slowly going to start moving into the new library. Uh, hopefully this will help us uh, move out of our current location and get out of there by the end of this uh This may be this month, but most likely it's going to happen at the end of May. Um, MCAT... Uh, we want to continue serving the people of, of Missoula by providing camera equipment, um, advice for video uh, making, editing, and all sorts of uh, sources for people to uh, contact media as well. Uh, we have done many streams and we've worked with the city of Missoula trying to stream and bring um, um, social distanced meetings to you and moving forward as well many of our programs have completely slowed down so you're going to see a lot of repeats a lot of slow tv happening on mcat moving forward as well um but i just uh, wanted you guys to know as well as that um the library the new library will slowly start to reopen and uh the idea is that we'll start moving in by the end of next month and hopefully uh by the mid to late june the new library will be open and MCAT will be brand new and brand open there as well. But for some of you who are maybe asking about uh, if MCAT's going to be continuing doing our Saturday drop-ins, we will uh, probably reboot our Saturday drop-ins next year as this COVID moving out and everything kind of uh, kind of bridged together. Um, we'll, we won't be doing any uh, kids programs until our summer camps at the new library, which will be in July, August. So. You can look that up at MCAT.org and more. Uh, again, if you want to get in contact with us, our uh, business hours, we are still um, open to phone calls and information, but you have to call ahead. Our, our number is 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. And for Wake Up Missoula and for uh, continuing isolating in my home, I'm Scott Ramp. Uh, take care, guys.